What's up, everybody? It's the homie Truth Teller, the street reporter. Welcome to the Truth Hurst Show. I haven't did this shit in a while. This might be episode 30 ish or something like that in the middle, 36, 37. I haven't did this in a while. I'm finna jump right into it. If your chest ain't strong, walk up out of here because we talk about things in the drill culture, things that's trending around the world, and just life is being a grown ass man. Because some of y'all grown ass niggas out here still being raised by Chief Keith. I say that all the time. Some of y'all grown ass men out here being raised by this drill rap. Let's be honest with you. Um, first thing I want to jump in right now, Memo 600. You know, he kind of went off on the internet. Somebody posted like a fake Face 600. They made a page and then posted a fake post. This post talked about murders. Deaths. It said something about Dooski the man, death. Uh, something like that. Keep killing these ops. This shit was so strong that even top blog sites posted it. Academics and other sites and shit like that. I don't know if they knew that that was fake, so I don't think they did it maliciously, but, you know, they did post that shit. Unfortunately, I was doing interviews at that moment, so I didn't see it, and kind of glad I didn't see it, but I would have kind of knew that that was fake, did my homework and research, but this shit went all viral around the internet. It linked Memo 600 to it, because I guess he like a relative of this guy, and just all kind of shit like that, you know, and Memo snapped. He said, look, it could be them weird niggas that paid the blogs. I think he talking about dirt now, you know? That shit crazy, though, because that was like police as hell. He even said the police might have did it, you know? But the reason we speaking on this is later on, you know, the internet is, you know, infamous with screenshots. They call it screenshot of 600 Breezy saying, yeah, he most definitely divided us or something like that. You know, speaking on six, I mean, speaking on Lil Dirk saying Lil Dirk divided 600. That's crazy. It also caught him saying something like, people stole our swag, the way we dress, they stole L.A. style, all kind of shit, you know? Kind of felt like he was still talking to Breezy, you know? And then Memo 600, today, early in the morning, posted something about they can't divide us with the Team 600 logo, you know? So it feels like it might be some inside shit. You know, this is Breezy. You know, kind of like first time really speaking out against shit like that. We didn't heard Breezy kind of say things, but Breezy not the type of dude to hold his tongue, in my opinion. Breezy say what the fuck he want to say. Uh, but I can tell you, when you look into that, you kind of do understand a little bit. Think about it. The whole thing with like L.A. Capone and Rondo Number 9. Those guys were 600 till Dirk got his hands on him and kind of confused the situation. Is they OT up? Is they 600? Well, What's going on with that? With L.A. Capone, you know, end up losing his life due to gun violence. Did Dirk drop the family off a big bag of money? We understand you might have came around, gave hugs and shit, but did you help the family out? You know, and um, so, you know, those guys know about those kind of things. Then you got Booker 600, who comes from 600, but be with Dirk all the time like a best friend. And every now and then, Booker will say some shit about 600, you know? And so it feels like maybe Dirk did divide them. That's what they saying. Like, I can't stick to it. But even Memo was over there for a little while. You see what I'm saying? And then issues happened. Memo left. Just Blow over there. You know, Just Blow locked up for a case. Pretty sure Dirk got him a lawyer. But is Dirk doing the most? It's different from getting somebody a lawyer. Yeah, you got millions. But is you doing the most? You know, so... I can understand how, you know, Breezy and Memo might feel like that. Remember, those guys are homies. They smoke blunts. They kick it when they hang together. I'm pretty sure these guys have conversations, you know. So that just opened up the door to letting you know inside turmoil. It's beef inside these camps. And the crazy part is once Dirk dropped that diss song, that name dropped a lot of people, you, you felt this shit, you know, because Poodle LaFleur kind of stood up and said something, you know. Uh, we've been hearing Muda, THF Muda, been saying things, you know, about situations, feeling like he'd been there for Dirk and was with him and did things for him and all kind of shit. And then nigga just left me and get the drop. Puda feel the same way, you know. He kind of said something about when Lil Zay got that chain. Then he was saying something. Yeah, we heard the song. We heard you. We heard you. You know, he even said, fuck them niggas. I don't think this is real beef. Niggas hate each other, but people feel like, you know, it's a lot of blunts with smoking, okay? It was a lot of huff bags when the nickel weed was out. It's a lot of $4 sacks with smoking on porches while niggas was freestyling, kicking it, showing brotherhood, saying, man, when I get on, I'm taking all my niggas with me. Y'all niggas, y'all niggas, and then nigga got on and didn't take nobody with him. 
So, you know, that's a little deep. But I ain't going to lie. I think a few phone calls can fix shit like that. But it's crazy. The Internet watching everything. The whole Face 600. I think we didn't got to the point where we realized that's not real. So, you know, shit get crazy, man. I'm looking at some of my notes to see what we're going to talk about. That shit crazy, though, man. Another thing is, man, stop letting the motherfuckers send you off and give you bad ass advice. Stop taking advice from fuck niggas and fuck bitches. I tell people that. If you're going to take advice, take that shit from somebody honorable. Don't let nobody send you off. It's a lot of bitter people out here that hate to see you doing better than them. So they'll try their hardest to put you on the same level as them. I tell people this shit, a hater will knock a real nigga down to his level and then defeat him down there. You feel me? You a real nigga. You not a hater. So once he drop you down to that level, he going to defeat you. You feel what I'm saying? Keep that in your head. Understand that. Um, chin up, gangster. Chin up, gangster. You knew that love wasn't real. Fuck all that crying. Fuck all that whining. You don't got to send her one more text. You know what it is. Chin up, bro. You had to know it wasn't real. It was your turn. It's okay. You know, you're going to get through that. You ain't depressed. You ain't going through hardships. You're just broke and lonely right now. Fix that. You know what I'm saying? Then everything going to be better. Put trust in God. Uh, but you know your standard. Same way these women got standards, brothers, it's time for us to have standards. Women ain't playing with niggas out here. If a nigga shoot dirty as hell, he ain't got no money, he ain't got no job, he ain't got no car, she calling him a bum, she ain't fucking with him. You got to do the same thing. Her shoes dirty, she ain't got no job, she ain't got no car, she a bum, we ain't fucking with her. You can't get the dick. You can't get the dick. You feel me? Same way y'all doing that shit, we going to do that shit the same exact way I tell people that. So understand that, you feel me? Because um, me personally... I love when I'm being loved the right way. I want to be honest with you. I love being loved the right way. That shit make me work hard. That shit make me tell you, keep your money, baby. I got all the bills this month. Keep your money, I got it, baby. That shit make me eat the cat right. That shit make me stroke right. That shit make me work extra hard. That shit make me grind. You feel me? I hustle harder when I'm being loved right. On some real shit, so... Get that shit right. Let's start normalizing relationships. You know, marriage. Being with mom and dad. Mom and dad being together for years. All that whole shit. Side piece. Sneaky link. Don't let this internet send you off to be out here busting down. You feel me? Be smart about that. You feel me? But you also got to protect that heart. Because I learned in this generation, Karen make you look weak. As crazy as that shit sound. You show a motherfucker you love him. They be like, oh, he's soft. What? 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 You feel me crazy? Motherfuckers be crazy out here, man. Like, real shit. Gunner, Young Thug. You know, that situation been trending on the internet for a while. People been talking about Gunner, Young Thug forever. You know, I kind of stopped talking about that because, you know, I, I did plenty of videos on that. And we seen the situation. Did he tell? Did he not tell? I'm not going to get into that. What I'm going to tell you, though, is, you know, I think this went past a lot of people's heads, though. Even though, you know, it might have been some dirty shit. People taking deals. They taking plea deals. They distancing themselves from Young Thug. Like, he did this shit himself. I don't know nothing. You feel me? That's a gang. It's a label. I don't know. Cool. But Thug did put a lot, you know, some of these guys in this position by moving sloppy, you know. You feel me? This shit was linked back to his car. You know, he signed the rental car. And you feel me? A few people doing dirty and moving sloppy. You can't. Fourth gunner to do 20, 30 years because some niggas move sloppy, you know? And with the plea agreement, you know, it's some niggas that didn't take pleas. A lot of people didn't take plea deals. You got to kind of say some of the shit that happened, you know? He told in his case, you know, even though I do think it did kind of hurt Doug a little bit, you know, but, hey, this street shit fake. I tell people that, you know, we be getting videos. I want to tell y'all something. We be getting videos of, uh, me, I get a lot of videos of rappers inside the police stations, interrogations, being arrested. I got a lot of footage of rappers being arrested. I'm going to be releasing them pretty soon, uh, editing them now. Got a lot of footage from some of your favorite rappers. You'd be surprised how many people was in that interrogation room cooperating with the police. Now, that's a lot of footage that I'm not going to put out like y'all say, Truth, you can't protect the snitches. You can't be protecting people who tell it. 
it's not my job to expose snitches. It ain't my job to expose a person, you know, who told the police some shit and work with them. I do feel a little weird, though, because it's a lot of guys that's tricking these young people into thinking that this is the type of lifestyle you live. You be true. You be solid. And I done seen a few of these guys in the interrogation room, fold. I seen one drill rapper from Chicago. And I ain't going to say his name, so don't be asking me. Don't be in my inbox. Don't be DMing me. Don't be begging me. Don't be asking me about this because I'm not going to tell you. Uh, but I seen one drill rapper in an interrogation room. Uh, man, police was talking to him, and he was under that pressure. He got to talking to the police. He got to, you know, telling the police all kind of shit. He actually was wanting to set somebody up for the police. Uh, all kind of shit, man. This shit was very, very crazy, you know. But like I say, you know. This shit get wild, but we are going to be releasing some arrest videos. Like I say, you know, young people, you can't believe everything you see on this camera, you know. A motherfucker get on this camera and be like, nigga, what's the IQ all you motherfucking there? op ass niggas, and then the camera come off, he be, okay, how you doing, sir? Like, you got to believe this shit. This internet shit not real, so I tell people that don't, don't throw your life away for somebody who, you know what I'm saying, performing because a motherfucker just said action. Be smart about this shit, man. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. Be very smart about this shit. But I'm going to be dropping a lot of arrest videos from some of your favorite drill rappers that's going to be dropping soon. And, you know, some of these guys are who they say they are, you know. And some of these guys are still who they say they are. They was just in a position where they're going to be doing a lot of time. And I tell people this shit, you know. You ever seen the guy, he got 50 tattoos on his neck, all the tattoos. He got all his kids' names. And, you know what I'm saying, he always be with his kids. He love his kids. He done did some shit and got locked up. You think nigga finna do 50 years for you? You see how much he love his kids, your ass finna go to jail. So that no snitching shit is fake. You feel me? People are telling your ass out here. I learned that. You put a motherfucker in that room, he facing 50 years, never see his kids again, never get no more pussy, never get no money, don't eat right again. That shit have changed the snitch rules. You feel me? Fuck what y'all talking about, man. Somebody asked me, true. How do you know who you pick to be with forever in your life? How do you know who's the right one? How do you know if this the right husband, if this the right wife? Shit, I don't know. I ain't a life coach, but if I was to give you some advice, my best advice would probably be whoever bring you the most peace, that's who you roll with. You feel me? That's your people. You feel me? When you was fucked up, you ain't had no money, you couldn't buy the steak and shrimp, you feel me? You couldn't buy the SB dunk, she had to get some pumas and she was still there for you, that's your people. You feel me? Same way for the young ladies. If you ain't got a lot to offer, this to the women, because I'm going to tell y'all this same shit. I heard this shit from somewhere, and I kind of want to tell it to the younger crowd, you know? To the women. If you ain't, you know what I'm saying, really got a lot to offer, you know, besides our heart and, and being a good person. That's what most humans got to offer, too. Your jobs and money, too. But I just want to say, I don't want this to come off shicey, but, you know, you ain't got a lot to offer. You ain't working. You got 50 kids, you know, you know what I'm saying? You, feel, you ain't in the best shape. Yeah, you feel me? Uh, the attitude ain't really that good. You got six baby daddies. You know? The man you with probably didn't settle. You know, he see the love. You know, he, he see potential in you. But, you know what I'm saying? He, he settled. You know what I'm saying? You be acting like you settled. Man, I settled for him. He 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 treat me right. So, I'm off the table. I'm going to just settle with him. Shit, he settled with you. You got eight kids, all kind of shit. Like, he love you for you. You get what I'm saying? That's not a diss. He love you for you. You got eight kids. You don't got no job. You got a bad ass attitude. You know what I'm saying? You always bring negativity to him, but he's still going out on you on your birthday. You feel me? He making a big deal out of Christmas for you and your kids and all kind of shit. You feel me? That's the nigga you roll with. Straight up. So, just tell people, stop trying to use people out here. I'm tired of all you using ass people, man. But that's it I wanted to talk about, man. I ain't did that in a while. You know, when I talk about some real life shit, too, I got some dope interviews finna be dropping. Yesterday, I did an exclusive interview that kind of threw me off. I say, what the fuck? This shit crazy. I did an interview uh, with NBK Twins. Dope ass interview. I think they legends in the drill culture. We did an interview. We talked about a lot of shit. We spoke about things in the culture. I took them to the board that I had on the wall. And then when the interview was done, because I had to get ready and go because I ain't have enough time. Soon the interview was done, they told me, you know, we actually the ones that shot the video for Lil JoJo BDK. 
I say, what? This is legendary. Hold the fuck up. And we couldn't finish the interview because I had something to do. So we're going to probably do a part two of that interview. But I had an interview with the NBK twins. They was here a long time ago. I told them that, you know, they might have helped start the culture and didn't even know it. Because before BDK, little JoJo video, I didn't see videos like that, you know? Yeah, we seen Keith, but, you know, the I don't like and shit didn't have 50,000 guns in it, you know? We ain't really seen the video like that. The JoJo video was the blueprint to the way everybody did videos, you know? Keith might have started it, but the way that rap video was, with all them guns and shit like that, that was JoJo that started that, and that was, like, what the drill culture was really about. As far as shooting videos. And these brothers were the ones behind the video. I thought that was dope, man. But I didn't get a chance to ask him about that. But luckily, we're going to do a part two, man. So we'll get a chance to talk about that. But I think this is a classic interview. Make sure y'all subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's the only truth. Bleh.